the other part of the national team that is here that you need to know about, and I think you've met, met them at meals and so forth, are national staff. Um, Mark, if you're not too busy. <laughs> Mark is, of course, filming this. Mark Johnson, our executive director. And I see in the back John, Lizzie Poland, and Ethan Vesley Flad. <laughs> Susanna in the room? You probably, well, you met Susanna when, uh, this morning, and I may have missed somebody, but you'll figure that out. Uh, what does the National Council do? I think the easiest thing to tell you is what we've been doing this last year. One of the important things that we've finished this in the last year is the updated strategic plan. This is a plan that will take us for the next five years up to our 100th anniversary. So it's kind of a, kind of a neat time. Uh, national birthday party in 2015 that I hope we get to talk about here a, a little bit. But the strategic plan is lifting up three strategies that we're focused on uh, in the next five years. The uh, two... I can't read one right. <laughs> Inspire and support grassroots actions. Uh, that's where the... Well, that's, that's what it is. Uh, is is the first of the three strategies that, that uh, we'll, we intend to focus on. Campaigns is the second one. And the campaigns you've heard about are TFLAC, the Task Force for Latin America and the Caribbean, the Task Force for Social, and Econo Social Economic and Racial Justice, and the third Task Force for the Middle East. The, the list of possible actions, campaigns that a group like this can undertake is uh, as, as long as your arm and mine and several others. And it was important that the, the Strategic Planning Committee and the National Council select and choose and es estimate our, our capacity for, for what we could actually take on. And there's much clustered under those task forces, um, but that, those are the, the uh, foci at this point. And around also the theme of demilitarizing life and land. Now this is something that you've heard about. There's a really nice handout in the back that you may have picked up, which, uh, which is the organizing principle at this point for how these campaigns work. Uh, the third of the, stra uh, the strategies is the research and analysis, which will support both grassroots actions and campaigns. Uh, let's see. In addition to the strategic plan, NC has been behaving a bit differently lately. And that's yours, right? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so we've been doing a lot of work as a council over the last year and a half to two years, frankly, to find a, a better way of grounding our work. Uh, you saw some of that modeled this morning with the two staff and the, the uh, two folks from the National Council who began by sharing their personal stories and who also shared quite a bit about their own kind of faith journeys and what brought them to where they are. That's work that we've been doing as a council consistently over the last couple of years. There was, uh, when I came on the council now, about three and a half years ago, um, there, there was a lot of, um, I, I referred to it before when I spoke about Paul's work, a lot of turmoil, a lot of struggle going on. And one of the things we've done is we've really worked at trying to get back to the point where we know one another and what motivated us to be, to be a part of this work and to do this work and just trying to rebuild a sense of what grounds us. And particularly, uh, an ability to do that in a way that's unafraid to speak about what it means to be an organization made up of people of faith from a wide variety of faith traditions, but people of faith still the same. So we've done a lot of work on just storytelling and getting to know one another better. To be honest, there were times over the last year and a half where that often felt, I think, to some of us, including me, as if, oh my gosh, is this going to be kind of continual navel-gazing forever and ever, and my sense is that in fact it hasn't been forever and ever, that the more we do it, the, the easier it is to make it just a little piece of what we do each time we get together. Another thing that we've done to shift the culture of the National Council over the last year and a half is we've moved to uh, often embracing open space technology as one of our ways of meeting together. Uh, instead of hearing reports from staff and then simply kind of rubber stamping those reports and moving on, we've really tried to move the council to a place of creating ideas about where we should be going from here. And so if you have, have all of you had, probably not quite all of you have had our experience with open space technology, but the basic idea is that we pick a focused question 
that we should be wrestling with organizationally and in the movement at, the, at any given moment. And we bring people together on the National Council around that question with no prior agenda and say, what's on your mind? What do you want to talk about? And people lift up different topics and we actually schedule those topics as if they're workshops and then send people off to go and do their own conversations in those workshops. And it's really, for, for, from my way of thinking, it's really transformed how we work together as a council. And it's given us kind of a hands-on way to really be involved in the work together. So bringing faith and values more openly into our work and getting the council to the point where we really understand that we are a working team. We are not there simply to say yes to whatever's already going on, but rather to try and represent our experience, our combined experience in movement building out there across the country. Which brings me to the important work of the NCC, which is National Council speak for our nominating committee. This is the, N the National Council committee is the committee responsible for nominating people to the National Council. And I've been pretty intimately involved in that work over the last two years, along with Paul and Jennifer has been involved in that, and a number of others. Uh, that work has become, uh, it's arcane. <laughs> we have a very complex system by which we try and name people in order to do it in a way that is truly representative around the country. And it's exhausting, honestly, to try and make it happen effectively. But my experience of it has been that it is, in fact, effective at getting us a council that genuinely represents the different regions in the country and the different religious peace fellowships in the country and still allows us some flexibility to look at questions around diversity, religious diversity and all other kinds of diversity so that we have a certain number of slots that are available for us to kind of fill in in those questions of diversity and also experience and skill that we're looking for on the National Council in addition to the slots that basically you all in the different regions around the country get to name. So I just did a quick check, actually, as we were setting up this afternoon, and right now, in the slot, the slate that's coming to this, to begin at this council meeting, there are representatives from the Northwest, the Northeast, the Southeast, the Midwest, and the Southwest. I think I've got them all. I think the only one we're missing at the moment is that Mid-Atlantic Mid region, Paul, am I right about that? And um, so we, we haven't, it's, it really is time consuming because in order to be nominated, uh, what takes place for the regional groups is that they, have, they can put names forward. The, the regional groups need to show us some indication that those people are in fact connected to their local chapters. So you can't just be a name that comes out of nowhere. There has to be, a local chapter has to say, yes, we agree that this person in fact is connected to our work. And then what, if, if we have a, a slot available for a particular region and those rotate, then what we'll do is we'll just put out the call and say, which local chapters in your region would like to put up a name? And if we only get one name, it's a pretty easy decision. If we get three or four and we only have one slot, then we go to looking at um, kind of the criteria and what skills we're looking for, and we try and make a decision based on those, who's had the most recent, you know, has, has one local chapter been under or overrepresented in the last several rounds? So you can tell it's actually a very time-consuming process to go through all of that. Same thing is true with the religious peace fellowships and the various affiliates of FOR. Uh, if we have a certain number of slots that come available every, every year. We put out the word to the religious peace fellowships that are not currently represented and say, would you like to, to nominate someone? And if we get more than we need, then we try, we basically we put it to the religious peace fellowships at that point and say, you all have to make a decision. I guess technically that's what happens with the local chapters as well. If your region names four people from local chapters that you would like to see, you all would, would be involved in kind of a consultative process with us to help us decide which ones would actually end up representing your region. So I can answer more questions about that. It took me over a year to really fully understand how the process works. But it should tell you something that this year we went through an evaluation because we've been doing this new system for three years since just about the time I came on actually. And we asked the question, is this in fact accomplishing the goals that we set out three years ago? And basically came to a determination that yes, in fact, it's getting us the kind of diversity that we want and the kind of representation that we want. And in the long run, I think the skills that we're looking for on that National Council as well. So the only other thing I think I wanted to lift up um, is just to tell you what we're looking for on that National Council, which is that we really want people who are genuinely connected to their local chapters because 
we're making a real effort, I hope you all are noticing it, to get reconnected to those local chapters and to understand what your issues and concerns are. You can see that, I hope, by our desire and commitment to come and be with you this weekend and to hold our meeting here. You can see it, I hope, in the reports that you've been, uh, I hope, seeing from Mark as he's been traveling over the last year extensively all over the country uh, and just meeting people and reconnecting and hearing stories. And Mark, can you just give us a quick summary of, I know you've got in your head, like the number of visits that you've done in different communities around 